everybody, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thank you so much for joining me today for a slightly different video than normal. This is actually going to be a review of some embroidery patterns that I was provided in order to, you know, review them and to share my thoughts about them with you. Those of you who watch my normal stitching videos, I'll link my most recent one right here, my most recent floss soup here have seen these ones finished already. Uh, and if you follow me on Instagram, which I'll link down here at Dr. Underscore Christy, you will have seen some progress pictures as well. If you're not following me on Instagram, please feel free to pop over there and follow me. That's where I post um, my stitching and my daily life, weaving, my dog, you know, all the good stuff. In this video though, I am going to talk about um, what these patterns are and how to use them and then give my thoughts on the designs, the kit itself, tips and tricks for using the patterns effectively, including some project ideas, and a more detailed discussion of how I use them to create these different things, including things like my stitch choice and my color choices and stuff like that. So let's get started. I was contacted by a representative to try an intermediate embroidery kit for review. And now I usually say no, to those requests because that's not what my channel is about. But I know that many of my subscribers are interested in trying out embroidery. And by the way, I'm currently filming an online embroidery class where I show you how to make this needle book, embroidery and construction. So keep an eye out for those videos in the next week or so. Anyway, to make a long story even longer, <laughs> as I do, I said yes, that I would be willing to review these products. Come to find out, the designer of the patterns was someone I actually already follow on Instagram, and that is Melissa Galbraith. This is her card here at mcreativej.com, and you can find her at mcreativej on Instagram as well. And she is an embroidery pattern and kit designer from the Seattle, Washington area, who also does classes and stuff like that, which I think is cool, like in-person classes. And she also has a very informative blog with all sorts of stitchy info. And I will put her website and her Instagram in the description box below. I was offered a choice of either three of these peel, stick and stitch embroidery patterns or a full embroidery kit. And I chose these because I have been wanting to stitch some small motifs on random things, as you can see here. And I thought that these would be perfect for that. And I picked the fruit here, the mushrooms, which you see here and all around, and these landscapes. And you can see two of these landscapes here, but I will post a picture as well. So I picked those three patterns, but she also has things like flowers and cacti and leaves, botanicals, etc. So let's talk about what this is. This is a pattern that is printed on a water soluble stabilizer paper essentially and you stick it onto the fabric you stitch through the design and then you rinse it off in hot water and the paper dissolves but the image stays this means that your fabric and floss have to be color fast so for all of this i use dmc colors which which are color fast and just commercially dyed fabric this is just a button down shirt like a normal shirt and then this these are handkerchiefs that I made out of linen that I got at fabricstore.com so that's like what I used and a lot of hand dyed stuff is not actually color fast so just make sure that it's color fast this kind of a pattern is great for folks who don't like transferring a pattern onto the fabric and let's be honest here transferring the pattern onto fabric is like the worst part of embroidery it, it is just tedious and it takes forever and depending on how steady your hand is or how good your light is or what kind of fabric you're using it, it can be really difficult so the this is really good for like dark fabrics this is good for fluffy fabrics like corduroy or velvet if you get like uh not silk velvet because you don't want to put that in <laughs> whatever can be soaked you, it needs to be soaked uh, things like fleece or felt right those kinds of fluffy fabrics that are difficult to write on it's also good 
for stretchy fabrics like a, a knit t-shirt, right? That's what this is good for because it does act, it, it is actually a stabilizer, which is nice. Now I have used this material before. Um, you can buy it in sheets from DMC and, and Sulky, they, they each, each brand has their own version of it. So I knew what to expect and I knew how to use it. But there are lots of tutorials online, and in fact, I'm pretty sure that she has information about how to use these on her website, which, like I said, is linked down below. On material choices, it's a yes. I like Sulky Stitch Stick and Stitch. It, like, it makes it really easy to embroider this, for example, on a dark fabric that's fairly thick. It would be very difficult to get a design transferred on this in any reasonable way. You can do it, and but you have to have special supplies to do it. So that's a yes on the actual product. So let's talk about the designs. First of all, they're adorable. Look at this dragon fruit. This dragon fruit is eventually going to go on this white handkerchief, and I <laughs> am super excited. I had hoped to have it done before I filmed this video, but that just didn't happen, and I wanted to get this out to everybody. So they're super cute. The mushrooms are cute. I mean, look at this adorable mushroom. And then if you look at the landscapes, they are interesting, but not super complicated. And um, I think it'll be really fun to stitch. And I'll talk about what I'm gonna do with these later on. I was told I was getting intermediate patterns and these designs, I wouldn't say are intermediate. The mushrooms and the fruit definitely aren't intermediate. The landscapes could be considered intermediate, but there are other designs that I think are more complicated on the website. And in addition to these, the wildflowers and the botanicals, I think are especially pretty um, and I'll post pictures here of them from her website. I just think they're really, they're really pretty and are very useful for lots of different things. So I'm a yes on design. I think that the designs are really cute. Although they're simple, like, a, you know, watermelon is a pretty simple design. I wouldn't have thought to make a dragon fruit and yet I'm a little obsessed with it. So I'm really liking that a lot. I like the designs. So yes on design. So we are yes on material, yes on designs. Let's talk about the kit itself. I'm gonna be honest, the kit itself was a little bit disappointing. Now, on the plus side, you get a lot of different patterns. So I think I have, I stitched three mushrooms and I still have, how many is this? Four, one, two, three, four, five. So I got eight mushrooms. I got a bunch of different fruits. I think I got five landscapes. So that's a really good deal with the number of patterns that you're getting. And it retails for $12 US, which is actually on the lower end of comparable products that I have seen on Etsy. And yes, I actually, I actually did research on this before coming to you. It's like I'm a professional or something. <laughs> But I wanted to be honest and make sure you had the correct information. So the $12 US is, like I said, on the lower side. The ones on Etsy, um, in some cases, were like $15 to $18 US. And many of them did not have as many patterns in them. So definitely good on price. On the listings on the website, it says that the kit includes the single-use patterns, which are these, which are water-soluble directions for transferring the design on a fabric, and suggested materials. Now, if you look at this card, you do have, let me make sure there's no glare, you do have directions on how to use it, and design stitch videos and inspiration at mcreativej.com. Okay, so there is no suggested materials, because this is blank on the back. There is no suggested materials on this. And I'm assuming suggested materials would mean suggested fabric and colors, but I don't know because I didn't get that. So that's disappointing that I didn't get the suggested materials. Now, if you look at the picture from the listing, and here's one of the pictures, I don't know which one I'm gonna choose, probably the fruit, because that's one I've been looking at a lot. If you look at the picture from the listing on her website, there is a picture of the pattern included. So there's a picture, there's like a sheet with all of these designs on it. And I didn't get that. The only thing I got, I'll show you kind of a more full. This is how it looked when it came. And then the back is white. So 
I didn't get that. I did not get the pictures that are seen that are seen in the listings. And that would have been super useful for me. And in fact, I messaged Melissa right away as soon as I got these thinking that I was missing something. But she just referred me to her blog and the listing for more information. So I interpreted that as it like wasn't missing. It just was not included anymore. And the reason why this is important is because of the detail. So well, for, for this, let's say I stitched the lemon and I stitched in the, you know, the fruit. And then I had to go on her website to see where to put the seeds. Same with the watermelon. And I didn't even follow where the, where the seeds are on the watermelon. And it would be especially difficult for this, right? So I'm going to stitch this background and then want to stitch the cacti over it but I don't have any reference picture for where the cacti go. Um, same with this and the trees. So having a picture of the patterns is really helpful for when you're stitching. And I understand that she kind of wants us to be creative and not like choose our colors for us and stuff like that. But having a, a picture of the drawing would be very, very helpful. So that's that's my gripe about that. Had I gotten everything that it says I should get in the listing and the pictures on the listing, I would have been super happy. As it is though, the kit itself was disappointing. And honestly, I think it's actually the lack of information that makes these intermediate, not the patterns themselves. And I want to add that from what I've seen, her full kits are really full kits and they include everything you need to stitch them, including like a hoop and full skeins of thread and the pattern and needles and all sorts of stuff. So I think this is just like the nature of how she's doing these patterns. But I do hope that in the future she starts including the pictures again because that would be that would be really helpful. So recommendation. Do I recommend these? Overall, yeah, I do. I think that the designs are super cute and I usually come up with my own designs, but that takes time and mental energy and it was really nice to just say hey I want to stitch a fruit on my handkerchief and which fruit am I going to choose that was really nice because then I could just like choose a fruit and do it and that was cool and like I said the designs are great I like the little stick and stitch although I have a beast of a time pe peeling that back off it takes me longer to peel the back off than stitch it it doesn't it, that's a lie <laughs> But it does take me a frustrating 30 seconds to peel it off. But I get it. I get it. I get it off eventually. But the designs are cute. The stick and stitch is really convenient. And it's fun to use. So that's that's always good too. My only grump, like I said, is that I had to hunt down an image for suggestions and to figure out where those seeds went. And that was really annoying. And maybe she'll bring that information back for us. That's the end of my re my actual review of the product. So now I want to talk about some tips and tricks for using this product, this sort of sulky or um, DMC stick and stitch material in these patterns or in other patterns. And I'll give you some project ideas for how to use these little things other than what you're seeing here. Then I'll go into more detail about um, what exactly I did, the stitches I used, the colors I used, that kind of a thing. All right, tip number one. You want to make sure that when you're stitching around the edge that you hold down the edges because when you come up through the fabric, it will pop the adhesive, the sticker off of your clothes. The adhesive is not very strong. So I highly recommend that you do the outline first and then you fill it in from there. There's definitely something I recommend to start off. The other thing that you want to do, I think that really worked well for me is once you do the outline, um, so for the, for the dragon fruit, for example, I would outline the squirrely part and then I'd outline the inner part and then I would dissolve it before stitching it all in. And the reason for this is that it is very difficult to get the stick and stitch stuff out from under solid stitching. So this has some discoloring around the outside because I did not do that. <laughs> I filled it in first. This was an experiment because with this one, what I did was I outlined, I did this part and then I outlined this 
and then I got rid of the pattern and then filled it in, right? With this one, I wanted to see how it would work without doing that. And it, I don't think is actually fully dissolved yet. There's, like I said, a little darkness around here that tells me that the pattern is still in there. Now these are going to go through the wash, so I'm not super worried about it. It'll wash out eventually, but I just wanted to give that tip. And like this one here on the back, this is a really easy pattern to get the material out of, right? Because it's just outlined, but these are more difficult. So just keep that in mind. Also, you want to use hot water as hot as you can stand. That will dissolve it much better. And it may be stiff in that area because the glue is still kind of there. Like it dissolves, some of it dissolves into the fabric. And so it feels stiff, but once it's washed, or once you work it a, few, a little bit, it will soften, you know, with wear and use. So those are my tips for using these, um, this material. Now let's talk about ideas for projects. I put them obviously on a shirt and handkerchiefs because I felt like this shirt needed some, something exciting to go with it. It's just a black button down shirt. It has a very extreme high low hem. Um, so it's very dramatic, but kind of boring up top. So I thought this would be really fun. And then I use handkerchiefs all the time, every day. That's all I use. And I had made these handkerchiefs and I have been wanting to embroider something onto them. And this I thought was perfect. So that's what I use them for, but you can also use them uh, as jewelry. So imagine like this as a brooch, wouldn't that be amazing? A brooch or um, this would make a really pretty pendant, some mushroomy earrings, right? You have two of these little ones, so you stitch them into earrings, you can make earrings, that'd be really fun. You can stitch them on a bag or a hat or some canvas shoes, having little fruit on your shoes. I mean, I have fruit on my shoes. I bought shoes with fruit on them, so obviously that's a thing on a jean jacket or another jacket pocket, like little mushrooms popping out of a jean jacket pocket, adorable. I was also thinking headbands and hair clips. And in fact, I think that's what I'm going to do with one of these landscapes is turn it into a barrette essentially. So stitch it up, pop it on some felt and then put it on a barrette back. I think that'll be really adorable. You can use them for visible mending, right? Visible mending is kind of a big thing right now. If you have a little hole in a shirt or a jacket, you can put, or pants, a pair of jeans, put a little mushroom on it, adorable. I think that'd be fantastic. And then I was thinking um, cloth bookmarks. You could stitch this on a piece of linen or whatever and back it with some felt, put a little tassel on the top and you have yourself an adorable bookmark. And these vertical landscapes are perfect for, uh, the perfect size for a bookmark. So that would be really fun. Tea towels, right? You could have a little mushroomy tea towels, little fruity tea towels, anyway. There are so many ideas where you can put little embellishments. Basically anywhere you would put a normal, like an embellishment, you could stitch these on. And I think that that's really fun. Let's talk about what I did and get into kind of the, the nitty gritty, right? This is a much longer video than I expected, but I wanted to make sure that I was thorough. So I used three mushrooms on my shirt and I did it on my collar. And I used, all of them are three colors. They are one, which is a light gray, three, which is a medium gray, and then 647, which is kind of a gray sagey green. And I did that for all of them. I did different stitches. So this one is a chain stitch with uh, outlined in a back stitch. And this is long and short needle painting stitch here. And then this is a kind of uh, stacked back stitch with also some needle painting. And then I have a little stem stitch, uh, all of this is stem stitch and little French knots. So that's what I did for my mushrooms. For my watermelon and my lemon, I wanted to make sure that they looked very neat on the front and the back because I knew that you could see both sides. So I tried to pick stitches that looked good front and back and I tried to be as neat as possible. And I think that I succeeded. And then here is the watermelon. So for the watermelon and the watermelon rind and the lemon rind, I used a Holbein stitch, which is a double running stitch. And that looks exactly the same on the front 
and on the back. So the rinds look exactly the same on both of these. And for this, I used a more chunky long and short stitch. So it was, it's sort of like a brick stitch. Um, and the back, again, um, is not very chunky, but I think looks really nice. And then I just used straight stitches for the seeds. For the lemon, I did a satin stitch for the white of the rind. And then I did a stem stitch going around and lazy daisies for the seeds. And I thought, I think that that all turned out really nice because satin stitches look the same front and back. That's like the point. And then the back of a stem stitch is just a back stitch, right? That's what it is. So I knew that that was gonna look good on the back too. Oh, and for the lemon, I used Blanc for the white. I used 444 for the darker yellow, and I used 307, I think, for the lighter yellow. I think I have in my notes 397, but I think it's 307. I think that's a typo. So I used two different colored yellows and white. And then for the watermelon, I used 326 for the pink. It's like a hot pink. 310, obviously black for the seeds. 704 for the light green and 910 for the darker green. So those are the colors that I used and the stitches that I used. And overall, I love how they turned out. I'm super pleased with it. And like I said, I'm looking forward to putting a little dragon fruit on this white handkerchief. This is just a cotton handkerchief that I got in a pack of handkerchiefs. And if you've never used a handkerchief before, I highly recommend it. I'll post a video up here of my like tutorial on how to fold a handkerchief so they are not gross. It's a lot of talking at the beginning and a very short, <laughs> short tutorial, uh, but I like talking as you can tell. That's available if you want to start using a handkerchief, but you're afraid that it's like too gross that'll show you how to fold them um, just like this. And so you end up with all these different places to blow your nose and turn it inside out. And so you're always blowing your nose on a clean section. And I like, I think that's important. Anywho, that is it from me. I hoped, I hope you enjoyed this review and definitely give these a look. I will put the website down below if you're interested in trying them out. It's a great way to practice stitching. It's a great stash buster. It's a great way to embellish things that you're going to wear and use. And um, I do recommend them. And I do hope that she starts including the pictures in the packages. Having those pictures really would have made it just that much more fun to stitch. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed stitching these and I'm going to really enjoy wearing them and using them. But having the pictures would have made me, uh, it, it would have simplified my, my stitching experience. And I'm all about, if you're going to, if you're going to stitch through the sticker, you might as well make it as simple as possible. Anywho, that's it from me. Thank you all so much for joining me. If you're a normal floss tube watcher, I'll see you on Saturday for my normal floss tube. I hope you have a great week. So with all that being said, please take good care of yourselves and have a good one. Bye.